Coaching's been part of my life since I was about 12 years old. I started off just coaching my local rugby team as part of captain and I had to lead the warm-ups. And I think that was probably the first time when I was sort of stood in front of people and when I was told to sort of lead a session. Um, and I just think I fell in love with it and I, I, that kind of progressed into, I was working as a, as a ski instructor for um, disabled people who were looking to, to try and learn something new and then that progressed into being a scuba diving instructor um, and then I started my, my strength and conditioning career in 2008 um, and then moved and then just evolved into calisthenics from there really. So it's just been a, it's been a central pillar of everything that I've been about yeah, since I was 12 years old, so 26 years really. I love learning. I've always loved learning. At school I used to love subjects like science and maths. Learning how things worked and understanding why they worked. And that's been something that I've taken into my coaching and one of the things that really grabbed my attention about calisthenics. It was new. It was different. I've always loved training but it was a completely different way to go about it and I had to learn so much more about my own body and different ways of training to be able to understand how it actually worked. And yes, you have to think a little bit more about how you're going to progress or regress an exercise within your training. But that's exciting for me. It's not as simple as just going in the gym and trying to put a little bit more on, the, on a barbell each week. And that makes it exciting. That stops it being boring. We have to think and we have to move and we have to, we have to be creative about the way we do that. I think there's, there's been something which is a central theme to my strength and conditioning coaching career um, and that's just my real enjoyment of innovation, creativity and having to solve complex movement problems. It, it started and I found that real excitement within Paralympic sport of, of taking a, a situation where there is no textbook, there is no rules and instructions on how you go about training a Paralympic athlete for success and I really liked finding and creating a dynamic training environment and starting to, to push outside what people thought was possible. So calisthenics for us, not being from a perfect background, not having gymnastics or anything, was a, was a great evolution of that and it, it created an opportunity to do what I loved about Paralympic sport in terms of that complexity, being innovative, being creative and applying it into a, an environment which ultimately just lets people who are, who are less than optimal to start really do some cool stuff and that gets me so excited of just using those skills to, um, yeah, just to, to, to redefine people's impossible, literally just to do that. Calisthenics gives me freedom from worrying about how my body looks because it's more focused about what I can do with my body. And that for me gives a, a freedom mentally about how I perceive my body. And I think that is something that can be so positive to, to everybody out there in terms of understanding where our mind is at in relation to, to body image, which is important for, for our happiness in that we, we understand why are we doing our training, why are we doing what we do. And it's got to be, I believe, it's got to be more, there's got to be more to it than just about how my body looks. I feel really fortunate to be able to combine my love of sort of complexity and, and solving those things within that training environment and then using my coaching skills and experience as something else that really energises me just to share that with other people, to give them the opportunity to, to, to redefine their impossible and, and we talk about it but it's the truth, we experience it and, and being able to can bring all that together and, and empower other people to do the same, it's just amazing. I grew up playing sport but when you stop and you decide that you're not going to be a rugby player anymore, whatever it is, you kind of lose that sense of, of play that was a big part of your life. When you play in sport, you don't realise you're doing it because of play. It's about rugby or something specific. But what I've found with calisthenics is it gives us that opportunity to bring that back into our training. And it's such an important part. And it's, it brings so much happiness to us when we are kids and we're unconscious and we don't know that we're doing it. Why do we lose that when we're adults? And I think finding a, a form of training which allows me to explore movement, to play, to have fun, to fail, it's all those things that we take for granted when we're playing sport. But calisthenics offers you that in abundance. There are so many opportunities just to, just to play, just to enjoy movement, to have fun. And we don't take it too seriously, which has a real ethos about what we're about. And it's an important part of who we are and, and what we think calisthenics is about and what we want to share with other people. Bring play back into your life and you'll never regret it. 
For me, one of the best things about calisthenics is you've got that play element. There's that real fun in it. But ultimately, I want to be strong as well. Coming from a background of, of playing a sport and, and being in a, a training environment where strength is important, I enjoy that, that, fit, that feeling of being strong, being athletic. And when I found something that you can combine both of those things together, so you've got the fun, the play, but ultimately, strength is an absolute pillar and the backbone of, of progression in calisthenics. It ticks so many boxes. Get strong, move well, have fun, be athletic. If you're thinking about what the, the sorts of things you want to take into your latter life, into old age, that is going to help you to enjoy what you do and enjoy every year that you've got left, I don't, I don't think there's anything else that you really need to, to be doing. There's a sense of freedom in your training with calisthenics, or, or certainly we feel that, because we get to play with progressions and we get to play with progression itself in how we actually progress something. We don't repetitively do the same things and get bored. There's always something new to do. And that in itself is, is exciting. And when you've, when you've not done any of this before, like the first time I tried to do a frog stand, I face planted and we had to figure out and understand how is this going to progress? How am I going to redefine my impossible that is not just then useful for me, how do I apply that then to the other people out there that are trying to learn to move in a new way as well and explore what they can do with their body and, and being able to then share in the excitement that someone feels when they redefine their impossible. That for me is one of the biggest things that the School of Sex is about and that I feel I get nearly probably just as excited about seeing the, the expression and the feeling on someone else's face when they've redefined their impossible, whatever it may be, um, because you know, you know what it feels like and you've been there yourself and you've been through those struggles and it changes the way you think about everything else because you can now do something that you once thought was impossible.